Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to do, as you can see, a very wide canvas. It should be fun. Of course, if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now let's start with our flat blender brush, and I'm dipping it right into, let me show you what I got going here. I got a cup of medium. This is my, check it out, my foundation medium. It's actually brand new still, and it's good stuff. I love working with it, and it's better than water for most of this um, thinning of the paint that we do. All right, anyway, let's take a little bit of our yellow. This is our cad yellow light and our titanium white and the, the medium, the foundation medium. And here's what we're going to do. Just tint the back of this canvas, the background, <laughs> the back. Oh boy. There. Just tint it. We're going with a swamp scene today, which is kind of interesting. We do almost no swamps. So we'll see how it goes. It'll probably be okay. But I like it because it, I think it'll just work really well with this vertical canvas. Uh, our light's coming across like this today. Did I say vertical? I meant horizontal. <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be one of those days. There, good. Now really quick, while everything's still wet, I wanna brush in what feels like a little purple color. I, well, it feels like purple color because it is. But I did put some yellow into it. Now, I would normally, if I wanted to gray down a purple, I'd put a little black into it or a little bit of our umber, whatever, you know, to gray it down. But I'm using, per I'm using <laughs> yellow in this case because I'm okay with it having just a tinge of green, almost a tinge of a muddy feel. That's good because this is a swamp. Cool. So I think we're going to go up to probably a little over half on our horizon. So there's a half, let's go right up to about here-ish. Good, because we're going with a high horizon, we're gonna need a lot of detail. Now I'll grab a similar purple color here on our little number four flat brush. And I'm going, let's see, right about here. Oh, it's too, a little too dark, and I know it'll dry out even darker. So I'm going to lighten that up just a little. Good, yes, there it is. And I just wanna bring in here the indication of some some stuff in the background. Just a little bit above the center point on the canvas. Good, that's about right. Bring these little trees up and then what I want to do is kind of give myself more than I want because you can blend it down into what will be the reflection. Now, you know, you don't need to go crazy yet. And this down here is not dry. The sky area is dry. You don't need to go crazy yet though just because we don't know exactly where stuff is going. Everything is, is subject to change. And I don't even think this is my final color on these trees. So let's just get some of this action in. I do want these fairly tall because we're not, we're not looking to make small trees here in this painting. Tall trees will help with the um, swampy look. Yes. Okay. And then maybe right up in here, let's build up yeah, we need the height here, so let's just build up real quick a little bit of a background to do some trees against. Using our bristle brush, we can easily drop in some larger swamp trees just by touching. And I like kind of the texture that this gives just by pressing like this. Now at the bottom here, here's the important part. You flare these things out at the bottom to make them look like a swamp tree. Now this is dry in some areas and wet in others, I can tell by the shine. But once you're done with this, I'll just show you. Then just take the mirror image, actually take a little bit of our foundation medium, and just kind of pull that mirror image down into the water a little. That's good enough. See that? Just do it quick and then you can add to those reflections if you need to, but a lot of them we may end up covering with highlights. We'll see. That's at least kind of how we can start getting some of these trees in. We really do need to block all of these trees in pretty much right now. Otherwise we won't have a very good idea of where other things in this painting will go. I'm thinking about like a little shack. I was looking at a lot of, because I'm not super familiar with swamps, and I was looking at a lot of photos of swamps, and it seems like there's a lot of these swamp shacks built on either like on little bits of land, but usually they raised up, it seemed. Sometimes they were on land, sometimes they weren't. They're very close to the water and they were always on like these stilts like you'd see at a beach or something. Now definitely the most important of the swamp trees is going to be this one on the right because it'll, it'll help to frame the painting and I like that. I don't always like that but I like it on this one. I think it just works. And we're going to 
probably have this thing either running totally off the canvas. Yeah, well, you know what? None of our trees really run off the canvas. Let's do that. Let's do it. There. And then I think this one will really just add a lot. Maybe make that a little bigger. There. Now one nice thing about acrylics is you can go back and glaze after things are dry. So put a little blue up in the sky and where it looks kind of messy. Here, let me show you. Where it looks a little messy, we can easily just come back and see like go back over the limbs and stuff. Cool. I just felt like we needed a little blue since we had some blue action kind of going down in here. Got to keep it consistent. Anyways, once we put leaves and stuff over that, you'll never notice that we did that afterward. One of the bonuses of acrylic. Hey, if you're going to do acrylic, you may as well take advantage of the bonuses, right? And so now, as you can see, I've mapped out a little swamp cabin out here. And I'm just highlighting. Fairly bright. It's not like super dark. Sometimes I know swamp scenes are kind of dark. Not so much on this one. They're not all dark. Some of them are really, really pretty and light. I've been looking at a lot of pictures. There. Nice little worn down roof. I think the more rustic we can make this look, the better. Actually, right there. Let me just show you one important thing. Right here, we just want to... That's um, some sort of a platform. Okay. Now, while we're waiting for this roof to dry, it's still a little tacky and I'd like to do some more details to it. While we're waiting for it to dry, let's just take a little bit of our yellow and red and white all together here on our micro filbert. This is a good one for stuff like this. There, that looks decent, kind of a nice bit of paint. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off. It's too much. And maybe a little white. Okay, good. Now, right up in here, and this is down here is dry so I can put my fingers on it without any messy issues and just literally stroke down. I think I want three windows in this house. Good. <laughs> it's amazing somebody lives there. It's so it's so busted and kind of I got some holes in the roof. Maybe I should patch those up. A little window up there. I usually like the little windows in the middle of the houses. A little window there. To the, eh, you know what, you don't necessarily want them all on. So maybe we'll turn a window off. There. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just finishing up and kind of feathering a couple of those brush strokes. See, after I was down to the house, I pulled a reflection, brushed around it, and softened a couple of the areas. Okay, let's do some more reflections. I'm going to grab my brush. This is my synthetic brush. I'm going to put a little bit of our foundation medium in with it. That'll help it quite a bit. Okay, wipe some of the paint out of the brush. And just like the house, we're going to reflect everything else in the, in the water. And for the most part, those trees we'll kind of not worry about because they're just dark. But then above that, we've got this beautiful sky, which does need to be reflected. Yes. So pretty. Actually, a little more red into that. A lot more red. There we go. So see how you play around with your colors. You can just add little bits of color. Mm. Don't you love it when it looks good on the palette and it doesn't look anything like you wanted it to, to look on the canvas? There we go. That's better. Oh, there's the red. Found it. It was missing for a second. Good. That foundation medium really helps. So I might add just a little more. Add. And then look, see, so we did not do these trees complete yet. We didn't paint these. We didn't do them complete. We didn't paint them complete yet. They're still unfinished. And now, so we don't feel bad about coming in here and adding highlight to this area. All right, we could do this certainly before, but I really wanted to get more of the painting in because I didn't know exactly how much water was going to be showing. Okay, very, very easy to clean this up should you overdo it just a little. And I think the most important part is keeping the paint really loose in the brush so that you get these little streaks. Mm, that's good, I'm going to stand straight on and we'll just keep going. That looks good. Keep it fairly swampy here, so I don't want it too bright. I like a little bit of that mysterious swamp look still, actually. There. Now everything back here is dry, so let's go ahead and add, let me show you the color I got going. Very dark green, but I added blue and red to it, so it made almost a purple green. Kind of cool. All right. Now, actually, a little bit of our medium in there would be a good thing. Okay. That helps it to flow better on the canvas. So up here, I'd like to especially in this area that wouldn't look so good. <laughs> I'd like to put on both leaves and moss. Pr 
probably mostly leaves, not quite so much moss, but we do want some of both, don't we? And I'm, I'm using my um, number four bristle brush. That's a good brush for this. There. And what you can do is you can kind of go with just a little bit of paint and whoosh your brush into a paper towel or on your palette. And then you can kind of stamp on these little open effects or open little textures. And then every once in a while, I'll give it a nice pull down to simulate <laughs> those little mossy limbs. So cool. This is with this color. I love this color. I hope it's showing up right. I'm, if it doesn't, then try to mix it up in, when you do it. And you'll see what I mean. Put a little bit of green, black, red, and blue. And you'll see the difference. It's, it's a really different green, and I like it. Very swampy. There. That's good. Very good, yeah. Nice and dark, and this will really help to, to give that effect of, of light back there because the foreground's gonna be pretty dark. Yes. Now the limbs, you'll notice, are kind of wacky. That's just because that's the way these trees are. I believe that these are cypress trees. Don't quote me on it. I'm not a swamp expert. <laughs> but when I was looking at photos, I did see a lot of these limbs that just kind of shot out like that, so that's what we're doing. I guess this is like a Louisiana style swamp. Again, don't quote me on it. There. Now, if it's a desert, I could tell you about deserts. <laughs> Just not the swamps. Nice. It seems like most of the leaves are kind of up toward the top as well. Oh, there's some good contrast right there. Next, I'm going to use our flat blender just to tap right in and see it breaks the bristles open. And I'd like to just see what we can do about tapping in a tiniest bit of highlight. Now, this is dry in the background. I just want to tap on the tiniest bit. You could do this with the uh, number four bristle brush or even the micro filbert or the angled filbert. Just for the sake of, of getting it in quick, I'd like to just dip along a little bit of this for now with this color, with this brush and with this color, <laughs> and then come back maybe with a different brush and then add more texture. You guys know that I don't really like to just get up here with one texture. I like two or three textures in my paintings when it comes to leaves and stuff. Mostly leaves, that's kind of where things go wrong. Because what sometimes it's, it's the reason people do it, and I get it because it's easy, is they'll just come up here and stamp one, one repetitive shape. Now when you guys do it, I'd like you guys to come in and add extra shapes, two or three different kinds of strokes in here. And that'll really help make your paintings look more professional. You'll be happier with them. And I'll be happy because you are. Yes, there we go. Very fun. Not too much color up here. Not much, just just enough to show some light. You don't want it just dead in the background. That, that, that's nice, I like that. Some areas we'll just leave dark. Okay. That looks good. See how acrylics are just, they're fun to play with. Now, let me just set the brush down. I like to dip them in the water and then set them down on the table. Let me get my micro filbert out. <laughs> this thing is so tiny, it doesn't even look like a filbert brush when you load it up with paint, but when you clean it off, you'll see that little rounded filbert end, and it really makes for some amazing effects. But anyway, right up in here, let's just add on what feels like a little extra leaf texture. Maybe a little highlight on the moss, just some different strokes. Like I said, we want different strokes up and through here. Yes, lots of pretty sunset colors. This is, after all, kind of a sunset painting. Beautiful, love that, and, and it helps the swamp not look gray. It gives it a lot of beautiful color that I think really brings out the pretty, the prettiness of the swamp. There's your new art word today, prettiness. <laughs> we don't want our swamps to be too scary. There, it looks good. You want people to have fun looking at them. Keep these fairly flat, just because that's the way they are in nature. Fairly long and skinny and flat, kind of like the canvas. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint these trees back in, and this time, because this is our second coat, we can actually get them a little nicer. Let's do it. Let's make them nicer. I'm going to be much more careful. You see, I've, instead of using the bristle brush, I've got my number six synthetic flat brush. What this is going to do is just give me more control. That way, we won't have so many harsh edges. Or, I don't mean harsh edges. What do I mean? <laughs> I mean out of control edges running all over the place. I still can kind of bounce it. Remember how I bounced it along the edge? I can still do that. In fact, I can leave some of my original edge intact. But what this is doing is really helping just to clean this area up, make it look a lot better. And it's very quick and easy. So I plan to do this the whole time because obviously 
I wasn't going to sit there and paint around each tree. Not when it's this easy to paint them back in. Just simply not going to do it. <laughs> there we go. Oh boy, you gotta have fun. If you don't have fun, you go crazy. There. I love this. Hopefully this is kind of inspiring you to get some, some swamp painting done. We don't do a lot of that together, that's for sure, but it's kind of fun to do it. Actually, let's, uh, I'm thinking about where, see, this is where you get to think and really decide where you want your trees to stop. Make sure that each one stops at a slightly different plane, that way you've got a lot of nice variety. Yeah, that's fun. Over here as well. Great. Now it's time to start working on these trees, at least the highlights finally on the trunks. So my thought is let's do these trees on the, on the, uh, on the in the middle, on the, <laughs> in the middle. No wonder it wasn't coming to me. First. And then as we come around, we can go out to the outside and do that one. You know what I mean? Let's do the ones in the middle first so we get them the brightest. Now think about these trees. They really do flare out and they have these little ribs. And you gotta get these things in because they're really the way they are and we certainly want it to look and feel correct. So there you go. <laughs> nice. So just work on these little ribs. Thin the paint just a little as you go around. It'll help it to look transparent. You can also darken it some. I guess that'll help it look, look a little darker too. Imagine that, darkening it <laughs> to make it look darker. Good, but you want these ribs on both sides of the trees. You don't just want to leave the other side blank. All right, that looks really pretty good. You can refine those if you want. They may need just a little refinement, but yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then just maybe keep, keep going to get all the little trees done. Now to finish up, let's add in some swamp grass here. Lots of grass. Maybe we're standing on some land. That would make sense. Unless we're in a boat. <laughs> there we go. Tall, tall grass. That's not tall enough. Lots of water. And I like to use water to thin this paint because it's, it's more runny than the foundation medium. There. So this isn't a glaze. This is more just script liner work. There. So that's my thought. It's nice to give you my thoughts. Because it's important to know why you do stuff, isn't it? Because otherwise you don't really, uh, you know, if you don't understand it, then it's more difficult. If you kind of understand why you're doing it, then it comes more naturally, I think. At least that's what I feel like when I teach classes. That's kind of how it goes. I try to explain why I do stuff, for the most part. Cool. Lots of swamp grass. You don't have to do it everywhere, but it's kind of interesting. And right in here would be nice too, some of this high contrast very high contrast area right here oh yeah bend some of those over nice and tall maybe like that cool all right well i think we're done with this little acrylic painting be sure to check out all the supplies that we used here today on our website thanks for watching